England's glorious northwest, and nestled between Burnley and Blackburn, lies the town of Accrington, home to the historic Accrington Stanley Football Club, a name emblazoned in the nation's memory, partly thanks to an 80s milk ad. Milk? Ugh! It's what Ian Rush drinks. Ian Rush? Yeah, and he said if I didn't drink lots of milk, when I grow up, I'm going to be good enough to play for Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley? Who are they? Exactly. Accrington Stanley is a club with a history. It can trace its roots back to 1888 as a founder member of the Football League. The club hit hard times in 1962 and shocked the football world by resigning mid-season from the very league it founded. Accrington's dogged fight back through the lower leagues was capped by a spectacular return to professional football in 2006. It's the passion of a few that got them there. Sit down, all of you, Mr. It's a good time! That's an option. Never set a toss, is that one? I've been saying time and time again, get hold of the fucking ball. It's fucking embarrassing. Who pays you away? Just remember that. They are the people who keep the smallest club in the league turning out each week. It's not all glitz and glamour. This is football on a shoestring, and the purse strings are always tight. What they lack in funds, they make up for in passion and a love of the beautiful game. Bollocks. At the helm of the recent transition from semi to professional club has been self-made Accrington man Eric Worley, club chairman since 1995, a club he played for in his youth. 1958, I played for the A team, a few games for reserve side, and uh, it became part of my life, certainly from when it went out of the Football League in 1962. It was like something that you always wanted to do and eventually I got the, the dream I wanted was to bring the club back into the Football League. For Eric, the role of chairman means keeping a tight grip on the purse strings and an eye on just about everything needed to keep the club running from week to week. Fucking lights were still on. Hey. The lights were still on, I had to get somebody to go and turn them off because the fucking bloke up there is too fucking concerned with his little, little looks. It's a hands-on job. I do go around turning lights off and uh, things like that to save money and I tell the people that don't do, you know, just what, uh, you know, it means to the club and certainly Accrington. I mean, look at them. There's a fucking steward for every two bloody spectators, eh? With more stewards than speckies. You won't pay half of them with washes, would you? Waste not, want not could be Eric's motto. He treats every penny in the club like his own. <laughs> well, that's because it pretty well much is. Eric could be a hard taskmaster. Nick, where the fuck are you? Up there. Up there. He's locked in your fucking office. Mick Schultz is the club's long-suffering multitasker. His many roles keep him in Eric's crosshairs, and a red card is never far away. I'm always in for a rollicking most days, uh, but he looks after you. Um, like every other chairman, he's got pressure on his head. You know, you work hard, you play hard. Yeah, I'll tell you to your face. If you've done something wrong, you know. But uh, end of the day, you forget about it, he'll bollock you one minute, next minute you're away, you have a pint with him. It's finished. A series of porter cabins serve as the executive offices and has a staff of four and a general manager, David O'Neill. I can speak to him one day and he's my best mate. I can speak to him another and it's, what the hell am I doing here? You know, so you, I'd, as far as the relationship goes with Eric, yes, on one to one on one, on a good day, yes, we're fine. On a bad day, everybody avoids him anyway. 
If you see Gary, tell him I'm after him. Bill. Bill. If you see Gary, tell him I'm after him. Must be one of those bad hair days then. Meanwhile, back in the office, Rob Hayes, the club's chief exec, and the Yang to Eric's Ying doesn't believe in good and bad days. It's, it's, it's always an interesting relationship, to be honest. Eric's a fantastic bloke. He's firmly committed to Accrington Stanley, um, and every decision that, that he or I make, it's always on, on the interests of, of, of Accrington Stanley. And while we may have different opinions of what that be, at least it's always uh, debated for the right reasons. Towering above mighty Accrington is the club's windswept training ground, where the team is being put through its paces by assistant manager Jimmy Bell. King, you lucky bastard. His nine years as coach under Eric is all the more incredible when you look at his predecessors. When we took over in 99, we were the sixth or seventh managers that year. You know, he's, he's actually part of company with six others. Uh, before us, so you know we, we have had to be uh, very successful, and, and we have had to have a special relationship with the chairman because of that. That was icing, though. Someone was going to nail Robbie Elliott's feet to the floor. Jimmy's boss is manager John Coleman. In just under a decade, they've guided Accrington through three promotions and taken the club from semi to professional status and back into the football league. John works closely with the chairman too. What's going well? I think we both understand each other. I mean. He does everyone else's job apart from mine. He has to have his fingers in everyone's pie. And thankfully, he understands being a manager because he's been a manager himself. And thankfully, in the nine years I've been here, he hasn't tried to interfere, he hasn't tried to pick the team. And if I've tried to sign someone, he's always tried his best to make it financially possible to get someone. Eric spends more than just money at the club. He spends a far more precious commodity too, his time. It's more than just a hobby. I'm, I'm the only full-time, non-paid employee at the club. You know, I, I do spend uh, a lot of time here. I mean, you need to ask my wife, and she's told me many times to bring me bed, and I've, I've contemplated doing it on a few occasions. It's, it's something that, uh, that's been part of my life. Unfortunately, the four kids have been supportive of me. That means that I can spend more time here. Well, they, they run the business. Yeah, then. The saying is, where there's muck, there's brass. Eric could say the same about cardboard. Packaging King Eric Wardy started his empire 30 years ago. Today, he's handed the thriving business over to his four children. Ah, but it's tough not to keep half an eye on things at the old stomping ground. Take like a picture of them all, all slugging their guts out. Eh? The success of E.W. Cartons has allowed Eric to focus on the unique challenge of running Accrington Stanley Football Club. <laughs> it may be his toughest test yet. Now, Gates, to be honest, you know, they are the worst in the league. We charge the lowest prices for anybody. Unfortunately, we get the lowest gates. Uh, our facilities aren't the best in the league. In fact, a lot of people would say they're the worst in the league, and uh, I can't argue with them. Oh, it's mid-February, and up here, we don't have a climate, just weather. And it's taking its toll on man, beast and hallowed turf. Newly demoted Brentford are making the long journey north for their first league to encounter with the famous Reds of Aki Stanley. It's all hands to the pumps, or rather brooms, as groundsman Gary Lewis battles against the elements. It's four hours to kick off, if the rain keeps off, we should be OK. It's, it's been a nightmare. I mean, we've gone from everything from frost to snow to floods uh, since Christmas we're, we're putting frost sheets on taking them off putting waterproof covers on taking them off but the rain is just running under the covers that's what happened last night uh, it's been that torrential it's just going underneath uh, the pitch has got a natural curve in it so everything like runs to the bottom end forking the bottom end would be forking useless 
and it's going to disappear around the back out of the way it kick off time. It's early Saturday morning, and because of the appalling weather, the pitch is due a preliminary inspection. Gary quietly keeps his fingers crossed. Throw the sand down now. Yeah, I can't see any reason to anyway. Right, nothing with that then. No problems. Look, just, uh, Shut me on none of that now. Cheers. Right. See what happens then. Yeah. No problems at all. I've just, just had a quick look at it as far as I can see. There's no problems as long as he starts chucking a bit of sand on and walking around. It shouldn't be a problem, but it depends on how much rain we're going to get, really. He's gone to fit for match referee up in front of us. Um, it's alright what he tells us and what he tells him might be two different things. Good news travels fast, and any doubt about the day's action are fading fast. The good thing is you can't call it off, so where it will be in the clear. All the hard work seems to have paid off. But as the Brentford fans start to arrive after their four-hour coach ride, they hear rumours that their journey may have been in vain. Little Accrington Stanley are halfway through their second season in the Football League. Today, they're at home to League Two newcomers Brentford. After early morning doubts, the pitch is passed playable by a local referee. Up to 700 Brentford fans are making their way north to witness this historic game. The last time these two teams clashed was back in 1962. As the preparations continue, it's the turn of the match referee to make the official inspection. Will he confirm the local ref's opinion or overturn it? It's his decision. All eyes are fixed on a mud patch in the centre of the field. Things are getting heated as Accrington Stanley assistant coach Jimmy Bell gets involved. It's not looking good. He said the play might slide in and break someone's leg. That's fine. After all the work we've done on here today, I can't believe it. Definitely off. So I can tell the BBC it's definitely off. Yeah, definitely off. Off, off, off it's the off. Mickey Mouse Club. Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah. That's a disgrace. This game is from Bournemouth, Portsmouth. There's a lot of us from Absolutely disgrace. And this club couldn't get the game on when they told us yesterday it was definitely on. I told them we, we played on Stockport pitch. Sales Sharks played there Friday night. It was a mud heap. Then we've gone to Peterborough and played the game totally underwater. I said, you're calling the game off for two mud patches on the pitch? It won't it's cheap. outrageous. They won't treat Premier League fans like this. It's outrageous. Because we're little, small, little small clubs, it don't matter, does it? But we're the real fans. He's so right. That late decision has riled these ardent fans who carry the true spirit of a football nation. There's a wine to buy. Three weeks ago, that's for your fault. I'm just signing that. I'm going to pay our money back, mate. We can't fucking run a club. We want to see. We ain't got no trouble. We want to go on the fucking pitch. The passion of those visitors has begun to spill into anger. Aki Sanders' stewards step into the breach, but things are turning ugly. We haven't played at the Stanley right since 1962. Right, unless we cross that threshold, we haven't fucking played at the Stanley, right? The amount of Brentford supporters that come up will not come up midweek, and it's a shame because. A club like Accrington need it. To big for this league, we're the Barcelona of the Lord. Aha, the match referee takes his leave, hoping to slip away quietly. But Eric does his utmost to pour oil on the stormy seas. Well, fortunately, we're not at Premiership. You know, we'd like to be at Premiership, but unfortunately, we're not. We, we don't get their money. You know, the millions. 
and I accept what you're saying, but at the end of the day, it's very disappointing that you've travelled all this way and it's off. After the fucking money back, aren't they? You know, they've travelled up here, there's nothing you can do, is there? Hey? Oh, an impromptu protest halts the referee's attempts to slip away. This is fast becoming a police matter. Well, these officials want to get off the scene. This is the problem. They're getting abused by, you know, so they have to go. But it's difficult to see how any calm might be brought to these proceedings. Well, they're very disappointed about what's, what's happened. Then, in true British style, a compromise. The fans are allowed into the stadium to say, we was there and the Brentford manager would address them all. <laughs> Suddenly, a security breach. It's a one-man pitch invasion. <laughs> it looks like that that'll be the only football kicked on Stanley's Park today. As a club, Brentford, we've done everything this week that we could have done to make sure that you didn't make this long journey for nothing. I would have loved the game to be on because you've made some great efforts to get up here. A lot of you have turned up and, and that's something that we, we're really proud of. So... As the frustrated fans filter away, Aki standing manager John Coleman catches up with Eric. Financial implications to us is, I mean, I don't want to keep my brave face because it's... It's, it's massive, yeah, of course it is. We can't afford to, but we've 20 grand. You've got 700 Brentford fans who've come, and they're impressing our backlands in this. It's a simple club who's got a, you know, a rubbish pitch. No, I think that's unfair. James, you're watching one match of the day tonight. And it'll be stop. 10 times worse than that. Well, not 10 times worse, but be worse conditions as bad as that. We've worked hard, really worked hard, and the end product's nil, isn't it? The real sting in the tail is the loss of gate money. Every penny counts, and Eric counts every one of them. Money is the big thing in football. I think, as everybody is aware, that the Premiership uh, get paid too much and we don't get paid enough. And the running costs, you know, are ginormous. So, in a bid to offset these costs, the club has rented the Crown Pub next to the ground and installed landlady Hazel Street, a lifelong publican and Aki fan. Well, my father used to be secretary of Aki to Stanley back in the 40s, 50s and early 60s. That was when it was at Peel Park, so I were on the pitch side a week old with my father. Already ensconced as landlady of Accrington Stanley's clubhouse bar, Hazel seemed the perfect choice to take charge of the crown too. I built the clubhouse up and when they got this, I were over the moon because I used to work here in the 80s. And I worked here for nearly 15 years, so it was home from home. I'm coming home, and to come back as the boss were absolutely fantastic. Surprise, surprise. Eric's hands-on management includes counting the pub takings. He's not happy. We've got a lease on it, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the company that, that owned the pub, they're not, certainly not my favourite uh, company, and I don't think if I got chance I'd ever deal with him again. In fact, I have a meeting with him next Tuesday, you know, here at the club, about, you know, the uh, prices that they, you know, that they charge. And I mean, there's only them making any money out of it during the week. We thought that uh, we get our supporters in our club, but to the away fans, you know, we never got it. So we thought if we get the Crown Pub where all the away fans go, you know, we'll. we'll it's not a nice thing to say, but we'll take everybody's money then. It's a bit wet down here, isn't it? We'll be able to come in Sunday if it's the weather's all right, because we've got to get Tuesday's game on against fucking Brentford. Huh? Again, after what happened last time. It's a damn Tuesday in winter. It's been five weeks since the postponed Brentford game. Now, replay time. Accrington and Stanley have been on a long losing streak. We've won one out of the last seven games. We've lost the last six at home. To be quite honest, you know, I mean, 
the people certainly of Accrington don't need an excuse not to come. But if you're not winning, they've got every excuse. So you know we need we need to get a result tonight. As the fans dribble in, manager John Coleman has his regular pre-match chat with Chairman Eric Wally. Have you picked team, John? Fix yourself, sir. <laughs> not like I have you. Especially, you know. It's the usual Accrington like Stanley pitch. It's like Wembley. Is it? Yeah, it's nice, it's yeah. absolutely brilliant. It's, it's it's brilliant. Like, is that like the old Wembley or after they got to Malice? It may not be Wembley, but the pitch is past fit this time round. It's a long way to come on a Tuesday night for Brentford fans based over 200 miles away. And the faithful turning up won't compare to that ill-fated Saturday. If they'd have come on a, a, the Saturday afternoon, they'd have brought 900 people. They're probably only going to bring, say, day 200 today. So that's 700 people who, on an average of, of £10 a person, it, it, it's £7,000. It's up to, up to £7,000, perhaps, we could lose. Remember what I said before? Enjoy the game! Play with a smile on your face! Come on, Come on, on. Come on, on let's go! After the Stanley fans are as desperate as anybody for a win. With John Coleman's encouragement ringing in their ears, the team gives its all. Stanley have had the best of times at the worst of times, and when those pals in red run on the park, the time is theirs to make win or lose. It's a rare home win, 1-0, and a needed boost for the club team and manager, John Coleman. Hey, sit down, listen up. That's a clean seat, that's the, that's the fucking holy grail for us. We've got to build on it. We've got to build on it, and how did you get it? By hard work, and you'll get your rewards, because you're a good football on side. <coughs> now, let's keep it going. Will you win? Thursday, 10 o'clock. Has a home win put a smile on Eric's face? Well, I don't really know you, Billy Luke. It's uh, not where I'm counting gate money tomorrow, I don't think so. Have Accrington and Sandley finally broken their run of bad luck at home? We're not holding the ball up, we're not defending strong enough, we're not playing the right balls. You take your fucking pick. Ah, maybe not.